Welcome to Digication Scholars Conversations. I'm your host, Jeff Yan. In this episode, you will hear part two of my conversation with Katie Lester, a senior in the Bachelor's of Social Work program at the University of Alaska Anchorage and a scholarship recipient at the National Federation of the Blind Scholarship Program. More links and information about today's conversation can be found on Digication's Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Full episodes of Digication Scholars Conversations can be found on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. I still remember um, working with you and one of your one of the experts that actually you brought on board. I think her name is Emily. Is that right? Yeah. Um, and where is she now? Where is she from again? She's from uh, Washington State. So, uh, but but she works at the. Was it the Alaska? Um, she was working, um, yeah, at the Alaska Center for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Blind. She was my yeah. first technology instructor um, yeah. for when I started school. So she helped me navigate Blackboard and um, school for the first time non-visually because that was another yeah. experience that was, <laughs> you know, going from working, oh, it takes me an hour to it takes me three or four hours. <laughs> to do right, an assignment right, right. for the first right. time. Yeah. And I, I remember her showing us, um, I think she said something in the, on in the, you know, along the lines of, when I come to this page and I don't necessarily just want to do the things that you think I want to do. I want to scan the page to see the lay of the land to to just sort of figure out what type of page it is, what's available, and what might be a you know uh, what what's might a, I want to do. What's and offered. depending on yeah, and depending on that, I may or may not stay. I may want to go somewhere else, and I might want to you know, um, and and it's from there that I decided to you know what what to do, and 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 sometimes as a sighted user of technology i forget that you know because you see it and you already kind of you sort of come subconsciously processing that but if you have to listen to the page then it's a whole different story because the way the bandwidth in which you are able to take in that it's going to be much narrower right so because we can only say so much so quickly in the screen reader to you at one time and and so you know, and I remember her showing us this is how I scan through the page, and and we were having such a big aha moment because she was like, "I don't just tap through everything. I don't have time to tap through everything. I just scan through the page, through all the headings, through all of this, you know, sort of method, this shortcut that I use in a screen reader. And now that I know where things are, then I might decide to tab around and look for that button." Um, and um or she, she i mean it's kind of an interesting puzzle too i guess you must do this a lot where you go to a page you don't know what might happen and you just kind of you know go and say show me all the buttons just so i know what kind of buttons are there um <laughs> yeah, right um yeah. go through headings what's all the with people? titles what's right with the buttons i've yeah. had to work with uh some here just at the university sometimes that they'll forget to label things or they did an update and put tabs in on a page, you know, to go from page to page. And all of a sudden I can't access my account. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah. having them in the links list or the buttons, the forms field for the buttons and correct labeling and having headings, it, it makes a huge difference and wanting to and or spent being able to spend just enough time to do what we need to or wanting to explore more of a web page. Yes, yes. Guest Katie Lester and host Jeff Yan reflected on the importance of using headings, labels, and lists in web pages to allow users to scan pages and navigate easily using a screen reader. In this next clip, Katie will briefly demonstrate how she uses a screen reader to navigate to different pages in a Digication ePortfolio. So here's the main page. And go to the link. Links. Links, list, 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 list,
Enter work history to move through items. Press up or down arrow. Leaving I menus. can bounce back to where we were, which is really nice because that's what others were able to just click the link and instead of making multiple it, steps. It was so fast for you to be able to just do that little shortcut. So for the links list or? Yeah, for the links list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It makes a huge difference. It's like using a mouse without using one. So that's how I also find buttons and sometimes is the form fields versus the control find. Now, I know that you, um, it seems like that you are not only uh, a recipient of the um, scholarship from the National Federation of the, of the Blind, which by the way, congrats again. Um, Thank really, you. Just really awesome to hear. Um, but you also um, have been involved at the, at the state level. Um, am I right? Yes, I am currently an active outreach board member. And su surprising on the timing of our conversation here uh, in a couple of days is our state annual um, national or annual convention, which is on the 4th and 5th of this year. And it's going to be live as well as in Zoom. And um, so we'll be doing elections and getting together. The national level is more the largest gathering of all the blind in the nation. But it's, again, we're gathering all the blind, you know, those that are interested in the blind to bring resources and knowledge and experience to help others um, in the National Federation. And we one of our big goals is to advocate and make sure that we have, we are living the, as the motto is to live the life you want, you know, but, and being able to successfully do that. And one of the things that the Federation has done is created a, a designed a resolution or legislation in regards to uh, accessibility and usability of kind of providing a framework, a guidance to what's what's needed to help out in succeeding and when people have websites created to make sure that they're usable instead of just compliant with the current regulations that they have some kind of guidance so there's not as much confusion. I think those would be those are really great ideas and i know that there are other groups that you and i have been involved with and one of which um are the fine folks over um at um at uh the university of illinois urbana champaign and this is with uh mark thompson and his group um uh and it's um it's called the iadp which stands for information accessibility design and policy program and they they run a really amazing program there um and we've been lucky enough to work with them and along with you so there were this awesome cross institutional um collaboration project going on there yeah it's definitely been pretty interesting and i still want to be able to take those courses that have caught our interest but i you know I think it was with my financial aid in certain circumstances because the university was willing to, like, in the School of Social Work, take those courses into part of the electives for mm -hmm. the social work degree, which is really cool. Um, it, I think it's really amazing that you're able to make that connection. And uh, it's a wonderful program. I should give them a little plug here. It's... Um, We've always called it the IADP program <laughs> at UIUC, a lot of acronyms here. Um, and uh, we'll post a link to, to it. Um, it's a, it's a three course certificate program for people who um, really want to learn about accessibility and universal design, but especially with accessibility, you know, with technology, websites, web applications. Um, but it, the one of the best part of of it is that it it really does not stop at in fact it doesn't start with just the technology it really starts with the principles of accessibility which really allows you to 
um, start to even scratch the surface of all kinds of accessibilities that we haven't even started to address. Um, we know that, for example, screen readers is something that people talk about a lot because you know it's it's it 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 feels obvious. But there is, for example, uh, a huge amount of cognitive disabilities, um, for example, that are not being addressed, and you know people um, were just scratching the surface of that. And I was talking about the you know, ADHD or short-term memories, et cetera, that we were talking about before. That's, yeah. you know, those are just some small examples, small, very tiny spectrum yeah, of the examples. That's the one thing that some people are now finally accepting as an invisible, you know, with invisible disabilities. That was a very hard one to have society realize that there is possibility, there is invisible disabilities, not just the physical of... And sometimes, too, I get it to where because, you know, people have this stigmatism or view that blindness, you can't, they can't open their eyes or they have just white eyes or something to where mm. a lot of times people forget or don't realize that I am blind or I am visually impaired unless, you know, sometimes I've had it to where is that? Is that a service animal? Said so you just saw him walk me up to the door. Um, oh but it's it's definitely all the memory loss and the different invisible ones are important just as well. And yep. Yep. having those knowledge and understanding makes a difference. And of course, you know, with with um, the you know all the Mental health, health, mental health um, part of you know um, accessibility is huge as well, and uh -huh. I have a lot of um, personal experience with it as well. I mean, I, 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 I won't go into too much depth here, but um, um, several of my children um, suffer from 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 that, and um, and and at school, you know, they need special services, um, and without those services, they wouldn't be able to navigate through. It's um, it's it's really um, you know, a, a huge part of what you know. I think a society has to recognize, um, and it it just uh, it's uh, it, and and in some sense, I I hate the fact that we have to look at it as a policy, as regulations, as laws, as you know, like advocate like you, you and and the group that we were talking about before, where you are. And we try to turn, you know, make them into legislation, but but really, you know, we should be better than that. Like we should, we should have had enough empathy in us to 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 do these things, even without the the um, you know, without having to be enforced by regulations. I, don't know. Uh, I think the regulations are, are fine and great, but you know, like it it, it is disappointing that. That it takes, it has to take that right <laughs> for someone right. to you know, um, you know, advocating in school. Just so you know, yeah, that's one thing. So I don't know how much you guys had to you had to advocate for your children, you know, just to get the services they need. But oh, yeah, it shouldn't sure. be a struggle. It shouldn't be yep. a constant thing to get them, yeah. get the schools to help the students. I mean, when right. you want the success of all. Right. Don't forget those that may need those special right. accommodations. Absolutely. I mean, it is not, uh, we've been lucky enough that, you know, like we were able to get the services that we need, but, uh -huh. you know, it was not without, I don't want to say without a fight because we got so lucky. I mean, for anyone who was working with my children, <laughs> who was listening, thank you. And, and I, I, we are so grateful for them, specifically them, to have been involved in, in our lives. But that's the thing. That's draw of the luck. You know, like we, I have seen, because I've been in so many parents group, et cetera, that, you know, not everyone's that lucky, you know. And we sort of, in a way, have to make our own luck too. We, you know, we, I moved, you know, across, you know, from the West Coast, the East Coast, um, a year and a half year and a bit ago and and um we had to look for schools and we just got really lucky that the schools that we got into um 
public schools that have um, not only the services in place, but it's actually the people that run those services. So what we basically have experienced is you can have someone who runs the same exact service um, are supposed to provide you with all that, but they either don't have the experience or don't really, you know, their heart isn't really in it. So all they're trying to do is to, they're really there as a compliant officer. You know, they're uh -huh. trying to make sure the school doesn't get sued by you. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's and that's the thing is, you know, the difference of someone, how they enjoy their job or how much they want to help versus just being there to comply in different things. Like cool. um, for as being a senior cool. in the social work of bachelors, I said I'm doing my internship at here at the University of Alaska, which is an amazing opportunity within the Disability and Support Services Office. And they, you know, they've done an amazing job welcoming me in, helping me, giving me the amazing opportunities to because I am still, you know, I wasn't introduced with working with anybody with disabilities more or less until I lost my own sight. So uh, I've been granted this great opportunity to learn and understand other disabilities you know cognitive or physical disabilities that um to where i can apply my training and knowledge you know that helps best them with you know at their Let you know for their life yeah. so why don't we switch, switch gear a little bit and talk a little bit about social work so um so what is social work like in from your perspective Obviously, you work with, you're, you're in the program, you have classmates, you are taking classes from lots of instructors and different, you know, learning all these different things. Um, so tell us a little bit about that. And obviously, you, have, you come in from a pretty unique situ situation and perspectives. And, and tell us a little bit about the way that you, th you are envisioning, you know, how, how you will do this and what's in the future for you. Yeah, um, with social work, you know, a lot of us come from different backgrounds and different experiences, and there's so many different avenues of one op simple one is, are, do you want to work with adults or children? Or do you want to work with a certain population as for um, different individuals or kind of organized? But, um, you know, how how do you want to go about it? I liked how one of my instructors mentioned to where you tend to be kind of a resource. You know, I think she used the word guru, but um, <laughs> it's, you know, you provide a lot of different resources. Um, one thing with I do here, which is awesome, is to be able to connect the community with students, you know, in the different resources that they might need whether it's on campus or off campus um, bringing the community together is um, really nice to see to try to work with and one of my goals is to actually obtain the master's degree in social work for a clinician's license so I can work with others that have lost or received have a disability um, like vision loss either at the clinician and therapeutic level well, or I'm... just as like a case management kind of working through some of these changes because you know for myself even as I was getting the training I needed it's so overwhelming it's such a life-changing way of doing things that it, taking all the information in can seem like overwhelming and stressed and sometimes you just want to like forget it I'm done <laughs> you know but when you have someone that can sit and listen or talk to you or help you navigate those different avenues um, can make a difference um, so that's one side of things and then the other um, because of the different struggles I've had through um, navigating through school, um, and not just with education, but I mean, it's been great with you guys because you guys willing to change where some, you know, some classes I took to where they, it was all online. You go to this link and website and do the homework or the reading and 
go to the next page and take the quiz and that's it. It's like half of them weren't accessible. So one, I want to advocate for more equal access within the education arena um, is one of my goals. And you guys have been awesome to help me start learning to do that. Well, one of the things that um, is really amazing is to working with you is that, as you probably know, that, you know, at the education, we care a lot about that, um, you know, the idea of making learning visible and being able to provide a space for people to reflect on their learning and and ref reflect on their own experiences. And at the very top of our co the, the conversation we had, you were telling us exactly, oh, I just realized that I'm going to be losing my sight. That's a, that's a, that's, that's forced you to go into that reflection mode almost immediately. Mm -hmm. And you had said, well, look, like the whole idea of, I don't want to take things for granted is a saying for a lot of people, but for you is not a saying, it's something that you, you've experienced in a very deep way. Um, Good enough. And I think that that kind of reflection is fundamental and kind of amazing, you know? And I know that it's, you know, like sometimes it's important to sort of find a silver lining in the situation, but I think that in some sense that opened up, op that must have opened up um, a new, new, new way of thinking about life for you. Yeah, it did. It, it really made me think of, you know, as I said, what matters, what I really want to do. Um, it also gave me a second chance to learn, you know, I've always enjoyed it helping others and the different jobs that I used to have from childcare to retail to restaurants and catering, you know, it, how I go about doing the social work or helping others makes a difference. And you know, learning how to advocate for myself, for others, um, understanding what it means to do something differently or have this huge change um, makes a difference. It kind of, you know, gives another side of things, another perspective, another angle. Right, right. right. Well, I think that there's also, um, but just sort of listening to you, I think there is that sense of you kind of like you were, you were saying before, building the confidence, building the or understanding that you know you have the freedom to do things if you know people are willing to just put it into their tools, and th to me there is a very important aspect of something else that we care a lot about which is this idea of you know be seen be be heard be seen be recognized and and that idea of building the sense of belonging you know it's so that it can wrap that back into our earlier um conversation about mental health and building you know building that that part of the mental you know strength um Don't know is uh, these are incredibly important components, especially in students as, as they're learning and as their the brains are getting developed and you know um, but it really doesn't stop, does it? You know, you, no, you you're you always learning a whole different you're gonna have a whole different career, different everything, you know. Um, after what you you know, what was traditional, you know, um, sort of a student age um, and, and, and it's never too late, is it? No, it's never too late. I want to say that, um, Katie, the, the other parts that I'm sort of getting from you that, that, that I feel like is important, um, one has to do with advocacy. You know, you are, you are obviously a big advocate and that's why you participate in all these, um, um, you participate in a community advocating for for you know the you know in in the national federation of the blind of the blind and at the state level uh, but there is that sense of you know the social work examples that you gave 
is very much so also about advocating at the individual level too, uh -huh. right? Um, I, I often find that um, if we all look around and, and see in our own community, in our own circles, maybe friends, colleagues, you know, people, neighbors, you know, the there is not a lack of people who has special needs and help that needs needs you know have uh, have uh, or disabilities um and and sometimes you know in order to do that work you don't have to go very far <laughs> in other words you don't have to go to the national level i think it's great for people who can do it who are willing to put in the time to do it but i mean i'm thinking about for some of our listeners here you know you could you could be a professor in the class yeah um but you could be helping out those that have, you know, be, being willing to recognize people who might have special needs and, and helping the, helping out. But there is also an increasing amount of, um, like you know, in education, people are building their own work, right? Okay. Building their portfolios to be shown to others. Wouldn't it be amazing? Wouldn't it be great for faculty members to get enough? sort of knowledge and maybe with the help of the tools to be able to teach students to be able to express themselves but take into account that their audience may not um, may be using experiencing their work through a screen reader may not have been able to hear what they are saying if they have a video etc so that that becomes part of our normal sort of everyday lexicon so that when we are writing a paper you know like i think everyone understand that writing a paper means like putting things on eight and a half by eleven <laughs> double space which is right. by the way uh, like a whole other episode that we won't get into um because no one you know we don't even print things out anymore and those that do i mean come on <laughs> you know like like we really like that's that's crazy um today oh, yeah. I, uh but you know, without going into that, um, the just, just, just to, it's not enough to just say, well, I want you to be able to read and write. I want you to be able to express yourself, but I want you to be able to express yourself to all kinds of audience, to, to an inclusive audience. Um, that to me is not really part of our, our day to day curriculum, is it? No, and they see it more as like an, a, a reasonable accommodation and it's like more of needing a reminder instead. But when it's assumed that, you know, that's where some a lot of times we get in trouble is assuming that everybody can see or everybody can hear or understand the audio or the visual, you know, it... I. Re you know, it makes a difference, but if we can provide that inclusion, you know, with the alt text or the captioning, you know, for the others that might be doing it, I know a friend that, you know, if you're going to apply for work in school for and have those, you know, I remember going to an interview and bringing these big, huge binders for the portfolios and now that we have the electronic portfolio <laughs> you still got to show it if they can't see it we got to right. make those changes and having that inclusion makes a world of difference um, and feeling included in part of the community or part of um, being able to express who you are yeah and I and I like that what you were saying earlier on about um, what I got out of it was yes maybe you had made this navigation a little faster for me and maybe that's all that one did but in in combination that the net results for you or for someone who's using the, the, you know, this tool may not end with, well, it saved me, shaved off some time. 
it uh-huh. also meant that I'm now able to do this without someone's help and that yes. I just achieve a certain level of freedom or confidence or, you know, being able to have that sense of belonging that I belong here. I also get to do this. You know, I don't get to, I don't, you don't get to tell me, oh, you're excused from this. <laughs> that That's right. like... Provides, That's not great. <laughs> right. It provides the accountability too, to where yeah. you can be accounted for doing the homework assignment too, because you have the access and the usability to free in, you know, independence of being able to complete that homework assignment or school or work assignment. That it makes it, that a huge difference. Right. Right. And I think that that's to me such a great lesson. Um, I felt like that we've talked about that before and I've learned it, but I felt like I relearned it again today because it's it's something that you forget, you know? You're like, well, because look, when we're thinking up those, you know, figuring out how to deal with those color names, That's it. We, weren't, we weren't thinking about like, could we make you laugh? Although once we started going into it, we were like, this is pretty funny. Um, <laughs> you know, all the names. Um, but but that's, I think that took little time, you know, from us, but it, it was fun to do and it became fun for you. And I think that is what's worth doing, you know? I agree. It makes, you know, the fun part, as you mentioned, that it makes a difference in that too. You enjoy doing it and I enjoyed going through it and, you know, it provides that encouragement and hope, you know, because sometimes life is just too serious or so much stuff that having that just a slight fun or that hope yeah. encouragement can make someone's day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, Katie, it's always so great to talk to you. Um, I know we're going to talk again in a couple more, a couple of days, uh, but I am so happy that you are um, willing to share your story and being so open about it. Um, I I look forward to um, our continuing together and I look forward to seeing what you do with it and also um, good luck with um, the, you know, the um, hopefully go, after you graduate this year going to the master's program and I think that the world can use many more Katie Lester's and um and but you are living your best self and and um making making um making everyone around you better people so thank you for that katie oh thank you all right take care and talk to you soon yes thank you have a great day this concludes our conversation to hear our next episode be sure to subscribe to digication scholars conversations on youtube itunes Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. The Digication Scholars Conversation series is brought to you by Digication, a technology platform powering the most innovative e-portfolio programs in K-12 and higher education. Our website can be found at digication.com. If you enjoyed today's conversation, please like, subscribe, and share with a friend. Thanks for tuning in.